Hi, welcome to my video on using Zeek signatures to detect CVEs. My name is Keith Jones. If you want to get to my other research, you can just get to it through my website. It's just drkeithjones.com, drkeithjones.com. And if you like this video, please do like it and subscribe to this channel so that way you will know when I produce other videos like this. All right, so let's go ahead and get into our subject matter. Why did I create this video? Okay, first of all, if you're here to learn specific CVE detections, that's not what this video is for. What I'm trying to do is teach a methodology that you can use in other CVEs. Now, we're gonna look at one example to just illustrate the methodology. Uh, but what I'm trying to do is be able to teach you a methodology that you can apply to future CVEs that'll come down the line. Now, what is it I'm trying to teach you? I'm trying to teach you how to detect something in a protocol that Zeek doesn't parse natively. So for instance, in this example, in this video, it's going to be NFS and um, without, you know, extra analyzer, Zeek doesn't just parse that natively. And I'm going to show you how you can write a signature that will detect a pattern in the first 1024 bytes of a connection, in this case, an NFS connection. I've been saying NFS, it's actually port map. So scratch all the NFS stuff, but a port map connection. Um, and when it sees that uh, particular pattern, it knows that this is part of a possible exploit. And then it, um, you know, the, the signature basically will let Zeke know that it found the signature and then Zeke, you can write some um, logic in there to make notices and so forth, just like any other type of detection. Now, um, what the methodology I'm going to teach you, I've used in several uh, CVE detections. The I, I listed four of them for you at the bottom of the slide there. And I'm going to link the slides and the links and so forth in the video. So try to sit back and enjoy the video and you can get to the links through that after the video. So there's four CVEs on the bottom that I've written um, detections for using Zeek signatures like I'm going to teach you here. Um, and then I list the actual source code because it's open source published code uh, with those blog articles. Now, if you're interested in what the attacks are about, read the blog articles. If you're just interested in the source code, I put those GitHub links in there for you as well. So we're just gonna pick the first one off the list. And I kept saying NFS, and that's because it's a Windows NFS port map vulnerability and you know NFS stuck in my mind. But port map is really the protocol that we're dealing with here. Um, and then NFS and port map, it runs over RPC. So RPC is the protocol that's just underneath that. So for this CVE that we're gonna analyze, and again, I'm not gonna get super in-depth into what it is that we're trying to detect. But there's the blog. There's the Correlate blog. You can go and you see what we published on, um, you know, what, what our logic was and so forth. And then there's the source code repo that I just showed you. It was the first one on the last slide. Now, the PCAP that we're going to use, I pulled out of the repo, the uh, CVE Zeek logic repo. There's a link for it. I'm gonna tell you, this is usually the hardest part of this whole process is trying to get a PCAP so you can write a detection on it and then use that PCAP as a test. So you see, when we generated this PCAP, we actually just pushed it into the testing folder and that's our test for this package too. So again, this um, protocol, the uh, RPC NFS port map protocols aren't detected natively by Zeek. So if you look at the con log, and I put a link to one of the example con logs in the repo, you'll see it's just a bunch of UDP traffic. Doesn't say it's port map, doesn't say RPC or anything like that. So this CVE, the way it came about was, um, it was a Windows NFS server. And the way it worked was you see a port map set and then you see a port map dump. And if we had a Zeek analyzer, we would be able to possibly tie into events that say set and dump, but we don't have one. So 
what we have to do is write out the bits and the bytes of what it looks like on the wire and put it into a regular expression that we will find via a signature. Sounds difficult, isn't all that much difficult once you do it one time. All right, so to get into what it is we're gonna analyze, we need to, well, usually what I do is I look at um, my data through Wireshark uh, because a lot of times Zeke won't parse it. So Wireshark is the next best thing for me to be able to see all the fields and so forth that I'm gonna need to cut up. So what I did is I took that PCAP that I introduced to you on a previous slide. I popped it into Wireshark and put it in this slide for you. And the two white boxes sort of in the lower left hand and the middle, I put those in to highlight this area of Wireshark for you. The lower left, what that is, that's the remote procedure caller, the RPC header. And you can see all the fields there and the size of the fields and so forth. On the right hand side, you have all the bits and the bytes that fit into those headers. On the left hand side, to make those values that you see on the left hand side as well. So you can see why I use this tool. Now I can see the different fields and we're gonna use all these different fields. Well, not all of them, but we're gonna use some of these different fields to um, as part of our signature. And I'll show you kind of graphically how they fit together. This is the dump call. Now, again, if any of this stuff interests you and you're watching this video, just pause it and you can then look at my slides as long as you want and then continue to pick up on the next thing I'll say. Um, the set call. So this is, um, you can see I moved the packet indicator down there a little bit and I highlighted the two sections for you and they're pretty much the same, but it's just now we're calling a port map set call. And the bytes on the right hand side are now indicative of a port map set call. Now we looked at what this looks like in Wireshark. Let's look at what it looks like in Zeek code. So this might seem daunting, but just stick with me. It's not a lot of code. I have a lot of stuff on this slide. I actually took a drink so you would read it there for a second. The red there, please do pause this video if you want to look at any of these different fields. So I'm going to go through them just to kind of point out what I did on this slide. So I took the source code from GitHub and pasted it in the slide and then I, I kind of decorated it. And I put these boxes around very important things. Um, first of all, in lines two and three and eight and nine, these two signatures are looking on UDP port 111. So that's first of all, that's just a given. Second, on lines four and 11, we have the regular expression search for what it's looking for in the first 1024 bytes. That's just a Zeek limitation. Um, it only will let you search the first 1024 bytes. So if what you're looking for is outside that, these signatures will not find it. Just keep that in mind. All right. Um, let me do the payloads next. So now we're talking about lines four and 10. So I'm gonna talk about four first. So what this is looking for is the regular expression, and that's the slashes. Um, it says anything at the beginning, and then it says anything for this RPC XID, and then all zeros for the message type, which is going to be a, that would be a call. So that was, um, uh, one of the, the earlier packets that I showed you in one of the earlier slides. And then the next box I'm showing you is the version. And this just says it could be version one, two, or three. So that way we'll get RPC, but then throw out false positives that probably aren't RPC. Uh, the program here, which is um, the 0, 0, 0186A0. Uh, the program version is right after that, and this could be anything from 1, 2, 3, or 4. And then it's the procedure 
which is the most right-hand box there. And that is when the 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, that's the procedure set. And you'll see that actually changes in the dump here in a second. Um, the program and the program version, I believe, if I'm remembering off the top of my head, I think that says port map. So basically this line says, look for any RPC XID, a message type of call, a port map of, um, oh, RPC version of one, two, or three, port map version one, two, three, or four, and the procedure has to be a set. All right, I hope you're with me so far. Line 10 says, any XID, and the message type has to be a reply. That's why it's 01. We don't care what the rest of the stuff is because in line 11, we're saying <clears throat> in order for the signature on line seven to fire, line 11 says the signature on line one also has to fire. So basically it's like uh, on, on the reverse side of the connection. So what this is doing is basically making a match on both sides of the connection. And it says, so basically if both signatures are true, so it's an and situation, Boolean wise, the eval statement on line 12, what that does is it runs that Zeek function called match set. So when the set signature or pair of signatures are executed, it runs the match set Zeek signature or Zeek function. Okay, hope you're with me so far. So this, we've moved down a few lines in our source code. So we're starting on line 15. There's a lot of data in the payloads in 18 and our uh, shorter payload in line 24. But in line 18, all that beginning stuff, exactly the same of what I taught you with the XID and program version, all that stuff is all exactly the same. The only thing that changed is it's not a set anymore. Now we're looking at a dump, which is a 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 4, which is on the end there. I highlighted it for you. That's the only part that changed going on that side of the connection. Now on the reverse side of the connection, line 24, again, it's just looking for replies. So, you, you know, basically it's a, like it saw it. Uh, line 25 says, I need the reverse signature. But ba so basically it's saying lines 15 and 21 have to fire at the same time in order for line 26 to be evaluated, which says execute the match dump, which is a different function, execute the match dump function in Zeek. Okay. Now, if I back up a slide again, you see that was again UDP port one, one, one. Okay. Well, port map can also go over TCP. So we need to handle that in our signatures as well. So that's where we're going with this next slide. All TC so all the structures I taught you, everything was all exactly the same again, except TCP prepends four bytes on the beginning to basically say, this is a record length for RPC. So all we have to do is shift all of our signatures over by four bytes and just look for anything uh, for those first four bytes. And you can see I highlighted in the slide there. Now, instead of looking for four bytes up front, we're looking for eight bytes up front because now we're just taking into account these four length bytes that we just, we don't care about them. We just need to offset everything in our signature to make sure, um, uh, make sure everything just lines up. All right, so main.zeek. This is our Zeek code. So if you code in Zeek and you haven't used signatures, this is the stuff you'll probably recognize really quickly. All right, so line one sets up our module and this is just the CVE name. Lines three through seven is what we're exporting. We're just making a new notice type. So when this CVE is detected or we think it's detected, it's potentially detected, we're gonna fire this notice called potential CVE 2022-20. 24491. Now there's a uh, line 19 is just to say we have this event called two workers set. It's just to make warnings and stuff like that go away. Um, we're just instantiating this, um, not instantiating, but uh, 
making this declaration of uh, two worker set events up up top globally. Not a big deal. Line 11, we have a set that after it's written, it will expire three minutes later anytime we put anything into this set. And the set is a set of endpoints and it just addresses. And we're gonna use this to keep track of any of the endpoints that we see involved with the port map set. Because remember what we're doing is we're looking for a set and a dump. So we have to keep some kind of state to say, oh, we've already seen a set for this. For when we see a dump, we can say, oh, we saw the set. So we can now fire the notice that we saw up top in line four and five. All right, so lines 13 and 14 just say if you're running in cluster, and clustering is its own topic. I may make a video on that someday just on its own. Um, it says if you're running on the manager or the proxy, use this event, or you know this event exists. And all it does is it takes a... Um, uh, it takes the resp hosts and it sends it to all the workers. So basically it takes that information about that host that the set was seen for the, the port map set. It sends it to all the workers. It fires the two worker set event, which was the event that we just looked at or the name that we just looked at above. That makes sense. <laughs> all right. Again, Clustering is a little outside. It's actually a lot outside um, this, but that's just kind of a, a gist of what you're looking at there. Let's see. Lines. Okay. So the reason we have an if on line 21 is to deal with different versions of Zeek. So line 21 says if Zeek is within version 5 to 501, or, or sorry, 5.1, Use the function declaration on line 22. Otherwise, use the one on line 24. And all it's using is that is used attribute because this is kind of a caveat with using signatures. When we're not actually calling this um, function from a signature, Zeke will complain about it. It'll say it's never used because it can't, it doesn't know that it's going to be called from a signature. So, the is used attribute, what that does is it shuts up that warning for you. All right, let's see. So the easy example of when you're not in cluster mode, what this function does is line 31, which is just add the endpoint to the endpoint that we saw a set for. So we're looking at the function that's called from the signature. If we look, say line 24, or line 22, this is the function that's called from the signature. This is the eval statement that we saw in an earlier slide. It calls this function in Zeek. If we assume we're not in clustering mode, we're running line 31, which just adds the, um, basically it goes into the state that you're given in this function, pulls out the connection ID response host and puts it in the set endpoints because we're gonna look for a set first. And then later on when we see a dump, we're gonna say, oh, was a set seen? Yes, okay, we're gonna make a notice. Okay, so if you're in cluster mode, what it actually does is, um, lines 28 and 29 is it uses round robin and proxies to push the data to the proxies. Um, with, oh, with the event two worker set with the, argument of the resp h so basically line 31 it basically runs line 31 in the right process in a cluster for you i know it's a lot of hand waving and i tried to like not get too detailed in these explanations but that's what's going on in a cluster sense if you don't if you're not running cluster you don't care don't worry about those lines line 31 is really the um the meat of what i want to teach you about this now we go to lines 36 through 39. This is the next function, which is match dump. So when the dump signature is seen, this is the function that's called. So 
when our exploit is seen, we should assume that the function in lines 22 and 24 should have been called first. And that's why we added the host information to line 31 to that set, is so when we get to lines 37 and 39, we then can then check it. And then if so, we fire the notice. So line 42 is just the check. It says if the um, response host or the responding host is in the set endpoints, if that's true, then fire the notice. Now, something I kind of glossed over was line 33 and, thir uh, 33 and 47. We're just returning true. Um, all that does is it says that it's, it's an accurate match or um, we want to um, we want to acknowledge this match. Really, that is all the source code. There's a lot of template stuff around it on how to install packages and so forth, but um, all that stuff's just generated by ZKG Create, and I have videos on that. Um, I have a spicy video on that, but I don't have a generic uh, package like this. So I may have to make another video for the generic package at some point. But at this point, I want to remind you, well, first of all, I want to thank you for staying till the end. And second, I want to remind you, if you're interested in this type of research, um, you might be interested in my other types of research, and it's all on my website, uh, drkeithjones.com. If you're here, please do like this video and subscribe to the channel. That way I bubble up and search um, results for other people looking for um, topics like this. So again, I want to thank you for being here and like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you again on our next video. All right, thanks.